Hi, Saison. It's Azura. And I'm Jermaine. And welcome back to another episode of Cleverty's Hash Podcast. This is home, truly. But today we're going to talk about everything out of Singapore. Oh. <laughs> it is Singapore home, truly. Yes, yes, exactly. As you can tell, we're all decked up in our reds and our whites. Oh because it's God. a day after National Day. Oh, Happy Monday, right. Singapore! Happy birthday, Singapore! But, you know, we have to really talk about living in Singapore. Mm. The cost of living has gone up astronomically. Um, a BTO in itself oh. is so expensive. I think recently, a ground floor flat in Yishun was yeah. sold for a million dollars. Yes, and a flat in Dawson was sold for $1.4 million. <sighs> My goodness. And this makes a lot of people, like especially our age, right? Mm. We question, can we even afford living in Singapore? in the next few years. Yep. Mm. And it's really crazy because a lot of young Singaporeans, they're thinking about not just cost of living, mm -hmm. but career opportunities as well. I mean, mm -hmm. after all, Singapore is a small island. Mm -hmm. There are limited opportunities, right? Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you girls, have you guys ever considered moving out of Singapore? I feel like your answers are going to be yes. <laughs> I feel like for me, it's leaning towards a no. Okay. Unless mm. I find career opportunities overseas. But would you come back to Singapore? I would, because this is where all my friends and family are. And it's just a place that I hold so dear to my heart. I think it's going to be hard for me to just leave, you know. Mm. But like you mentioned just now, there's limited opportunities in Singapore, especially in our industry, the entertainment industry. Of course, you know, there's more opportunities elsewhere, say in like China, Taiwan, Korea. So if I can find like an opportunity overseas I don't see why not for me to just grow and come back and bring more value to my home mm. ah, but coming back is the thing right so there's two different terms there's emigrate and migrate okay, okay? emigrate means you move away permanently with that mm. you know thought to stay away from Singapore forever from yeah. your home country migrating is a temporary situation mm. so you move away you go from place to place but you eventually want to come back that's your goal it's right. like animals migrating for winter <laughs> Are you back. calling us animals? <laughs> no. <laughs> but what about you, Zura? Have you uh, considered emigrating or migrating? Actually, I think you would know this as well, but it's been something that I've been thinking about, especially recently. Um, I feel like I need to do it while I can. You know, while I'm still young, while I still don't have much responsibilities, not much holding me back here. Kids. Mm. <clears throat> mm, correct. <laughs> And I feel like I want to do it, you know, maybe for a couple of years. That's what I'm thinking right now. I don't think it's a forever thing. I think like when you talk about like, you know, immigrating, it's very scary, right? Mm. It's like leaving your home forever. But for now, I think maybe in the next few years, I want to see how I can make it happen for maybe just a couple of years. Right. Just for me to get it out of my system. Um, in my head, it looks like just to... Like, you know, play for a couple of years oh. and then come back. You know what's surprising? Like, uh, one in five young Singaporeans aged 19 to 30, which we fall into, yeah. they actually said they want to emigrate, oh. like, permanently out of Singapore. And this was according to research published by the Institute of Policy Studies. Mm. Um, they conducted the same research back in 2010 compared to 2015, right? Actually, more people want to stay in Singapore. Oh, oh. yeah, which is surprising. But these are pre-COVID numbers. I think after COVID, more people want to stay. Oh, well, this oh. is what I feel because looking at the entire global situation, mm. I felt that Singapore handled the COVID situation very, very well. True. I mean, we can't deny that. Masks, COVID mm. tests, ART kits, yeah. um, even, um, what do you call that? Uh, um, jab jabs. Yeah, the jabs. Vaccination. <laughs> Vaccination, yes. The immune <laughs> jabs, you know, the yeah. immunity jabs. I felt like our government and our system handled mm. it super well. Yeah. When you look at the political situation in the mm. world right now, I mean, it, it's very, very volatile. Mm. And I feel like in Singapore, you get that sense of safety and security right, that you right. might not get elsewhere. Do you feel like now, right, after COVID, more Singaporeans our age would want to stay in Singapore? What about you, Zura? Okay, first off, I think that people are revenge travelling right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking about sure. herself. <laughs> yeah. Like she herself. <laughs> Yes, that's me. <laughs> but I think that uh, maybe with people traveling, right, and, you know, the borders opening, once they get out of the country, they might find that sense of, you know, oh, this is what it was like. And they may realize like, oh, the world is so much bigger. Because for two years, we were sort of stuck in this bubble. Mm. And we sort of forgot about everything else. But I think now that it's opening up, maybe when they conduct the survey again, um, more people might think that they've seen more stuff mm. and they've forgotten about that and they may want to experience more of that. That's true. Can't mm. deny that. But um, this singer was telling me, uh, he or she, I cannot name who, mm. went overseas to like, you know, do his or her music and upon coming back, um, 
he or she felt that you know the Singapore system is really a lot more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Yeah. Like all the processes, you know, mm. it's really a lot easier. Especially like when you apply for stuff here. I mean, not the passport thing. Like, that one, sorry, I cannot really help you right now. But everything else. Yes, and I cannot deny the statistics that you mentioned just now, right? The ground floor Asian HDB is selling for over a million dollars. So here are some um, statistics. Some sale transactions condo based okay condo based so okay, okay, this okay. is this just happened in July um, this condo at Belmoral Road 947 square feet sold for 3.2 million <gasps> where am I gonna get that money and it's 947 square feet that's not that big it's not that big wait how big is your room right now 250 square feet but a house leh yeah lo? 3 million 3 million I cannot yeah and my rent how much only and you know COE what? is how much now like 90k 100 over <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ride a bicycle. <laughs> no, but it's really crazy, the cost of living. So yes. for some people, it's not even like a, oh, I really want to move away mm. from Singapore. For some people, it's just, I can't afford to live in Singapore. Mm -hmm. um, one of my friends, uh, you guys know Jermaine, she, mm. she moved out of the country. That was when Obama was still president. Okay. Right? So she moved, she emigrated there. You know, she had a great time. You know, she's living her life and very happy. When Trump came into office, mm. there was a lot of Asian hate. Yeah. And it was very uncertain whether she would be deported or not. And she was seriously considering in those couple of years that he was in office, she was thinking, actually, I should go back to Singapore. I don't mm. think that this place is safe for me anymore. Mm. And she really felt like she was in danger okay. for those couple of years. But as of now, is she still there? She yeah, is. because now Biden's in office right. and, and I think it's stabilising a little bit more. But still, you know, it's still kind of like not home. Mm. Yeah. Right. But bringing this back into the local situation, I also have a lot of friends complaining that even the coffee shop food prices <laughs> are going up now. Yeah. So, you know, it's really that cost of living versus um, leaving your comfort zone, mm. settling down somewhere else. And who's to say that the cost of living overseas is any cheaper than it is in Singapore? Correct. Yeah. I think objectively, we need to identify as well that, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, you True. know? You know, you're here, you want to be there. You're there, you want to be here. It's mm. always going to be like that, right? I mean, like, we've lived away for a couple of years as well, a couple of months. And I think um, you always... Okay, for me, right, when I was living away for the first time ever in my life, I watched the most Singaporean TV. Huh? Oh, really? Oh my god, I was on watch all the time, mate. Eh? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Because you miss home? Yes! Aww. Because it made me feel like I was catching up with what was happening here mm. and I could like watch my friends or whatever it was, you know? You know, on radio, I've received this kind of text too many times. Mm. Singaporeans in Melbourne, Australia, mm. Korea, mm. Taiwan, just texting in and saying, you know, it feels so good just turning on me listen and listening to you guys talk yeah. because I feel like I'm home. Mm. So this goes to show that, you know, when they are abroad, they still miss home. Yeah, right. they want to connect with something at home. Right. But just out of curiosity, right? Let's say if you were to emigrate or migrate somewhere, where would it be? I feel like you girls know my answer. Uh, China. Right! Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but where in China? Do you know? I feel like anywhere is fine. Okay. okay. It's just a different kind of Harbin. culture. <laughs> Harbin. Different kind of culture. And I still love my Asian food, right? Mm -hmm. I love the Chinese language. So I think China would be the perfect place for me. You look like you know, you would thrive there, actually. Yes. You never know, yeah. Ha! She'll be a huge <laughs> star there. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. you girls are too kind. Let me guess. You would want to, both of you, would want to immigrate to the USA. For me, yes. <laughs> USA, USA? Mm. Oh. Mm. Want right. to go? Which part of USA? Yeah. Um, I would probably move to LA. Mm. Nice. Yeah. When we were in LA for our trip, right, I could really tell that Jeremy loved it so much. <laughs> She's so happy every day and I really like to see that. Honestly, right, that trip, changed my life. <laughs> wow. It really did. Because I was never a US girl, but for some reason, and I want to say that I've been to like a couple of places before that and all that, right? But I've never lost my heart to a city the way I did. Aww. And I can't tell if, you know, it was the company or whatever it was. It but is the company. I think so, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And I feel like I need to make a couple more trips with different people, with myself, with whatever it is, just to feel it out and see like, you know, maybe I might hate it. Maybe it was a one-time thing. Maybe it was because it was our first trip out of the country right. after COVID. Right. I can't tell what it is, but I've never lost my heart that way before. I know. Yesterday, I was just on the radio show, right? And mm -hmm. I told my radio show partner, Avery, I was like, you know what? I really want to emigrate. I really want to, or migrate. I, mm -hmm. I want to live in LA. And he got shocked. He was like, don't leave me. <laughs> 
But but I think it's an experience, and a lot of Singaporeans they want to live, you know, out of the country. Like, let's say if you guys were to want to move, what would that main reason be? For me, it's definitely the career opportunity. Like, I'm not gonna make this move until I'm sure there's something in there for me, mm. because I don't want to go there and you know eat grass every day. Mm. Like, I have to count my finances from month to month yeah. just to make sure I have enough to keep me going. I feel like that is so tough. Maybe what the China grass tastes better. I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe uh, not just greener, <laughs> but tastes better. <laughs> tastes better. <laughs> yeah. For me, if I were to think about migrating away, right, it would really be to meet more people. Mm. Because I guess in Singapore, yes, we do have, you know, a lot of different people from different walks of life. But at the end of the day, I think the culture is set. And there's no changing that. That's, you know, how it is. But when you move away, you meet, your, your worldview is just open. And I think that's something that's really exciting about life. Yes. But I would miss Singapore a lot mm. if I were to move away. Oh, something that I've been saying is that, you know, the day I decide that I'm ready to move, yeah. I think I'm ready for a quiet life. You want to live in the countryside? No, 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 no. A lot of people tell me like, a quiet life and me can't exist together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah. You are sure. the literal definition of a noisy life. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I want a quiet life, you know? Okay. So maybe <laughs> um, a closer, smaller group of friends? Okay. I think that if I were to move to LA and why I want to do that for a couple of years is because I feel like I want to play. <laughs> why are you laughing? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Continue. <laughs> I want to play in a place where no one knows me. Ah. Somewhere where I can just explore mm. and sort of like... Express yourself fully. Yes. I think. Yeah. And not think about climbing the ladder. I could grow like laterally. That's fine. Mm. Okay. But... Um, I think that's important for me. Yeah. Mm. So I think these are some of like the, you know, good things that we hope to happen if we ever move out of Singapore, mm. right? Um, but migrating out of Singapore is not easy. You have to think about like, are you going to get a job? You know, do you visa. need a visa? Yeah. How are you going to stay there? Are you going to get deported back? Because that's not your home country, right? Um, what are some of the fears that you would feel about leaving your home country? My goodness, you know, the whole Asian hate thing that you mentioned just now mm. really scares me. Yeah. So in the news article, like just a few months back, I saw this man who was shot to death just because he didn't give enough dark sauce to this Caucasian, mm. right? And this is really, really scary. Oh my God. Mm. Do you remember what happened to us? Oh, in oh, LA? Yes! My goodness, we got to share this, we got to okay. share this. So we were walking. She was, I can't remember Somewhere. where, I don't know. <laughs> but Hazel and I were together, just the two of us. It was broad daylight, like noon? Yes, yes. like 11, 12 and p.m. We, had all we were meeting for lunch. Yes, we were meeting yes, for lunch. Yes. So we were walking there. And then this guy from the back starts screaming at us. And he was following us for a good like 100, 200 meters. All the way, he was just screaming. And we were like, oh my god, oh my god. Exactly. It was so scary. And to avoid this guy, we actually yeah. went into a, a supermarket. Store. Yeah, a supermarket. Yeah. We just made one round. We came out and there he was outside waiting, waiting for, for us. Waiting for us. What did he, he shout crazy. at you? I couldn't hear. Hey, what's off the lines of your thing we stupid or something like that? You know, I can't really make out. Yeah, it's exactly. like racial hate kind of yes. vibe. La. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. But um, after we reached the restaurant, mm. we took the indoor we seat. The, the restaurant staff was very nice. We so, crossed. And then he yes. didn't cross with us. Yes, he didn't yeah. cross the road. Mm. Yeah, so upon seeing that we were settled in the restaurant, he just left. Mm. Gosh, I hope that, that never happened to any Asians overseas. No, but mm. that's it's very scary. scary. You actually feel like your, your life is in danger when yeah. things yeah. like that happened to you and I mean we know Sharon out, right? Yeah. Yes of course. She moved to Paris she decided to go there um, and work and all that she's been living there for about 2-3 years mm -hmm. and I think it came out in the headlines a couple of months ago that her whole apartment was robbed she said that everything she's ever owned in her life was gone except her cat her cat was still there but she was so distraught she, she lost everything can you imagine that? Oh my gosh I really feel for her and it took her uh, quite a couple of days to even announce this on Instagram because she yeah. just had to get over that trauma yeah. that was eating her up. Mm. Yeah. Of course, that could happen in Singapore. I mean, you could get robbed in Singapore also. It's just the likelihood is lesser. No, right. it's true. And you yeah. know, having just come back as well from being away for three weeks, um, I found myself having to think about things like my bag, mm -hmm. like holding on to it, like making sure that my zip is facing the front and not the back. Yeah. Yeah. And these are things that we don't even think about in Singapore. Actually, when my friend and I were in... Barcelona, we were sitting somewhere and then, you know, Singaporeans being Singaporeans, right? So my bag was on my lap. Her bag, she put it on another chair next to her. <gasps> oh dear. And our phones were on the table. And um, this guy, because it was like a touristy sort of place, but it was like a cafe that we were at. So this guy comes up to us. He wasn't like security or anything. He was just like in a suit. He comes up to us and he was like, hold your bag and keep your phone. People are watching. Oh my gosh. And we were like, 
Oh he was just God. genuinely a nice guy trying oh. to warn oh, you guys. Oh, Yuko's so lucky. Yeah. yeah, it could have been gone in an exactly. instant. Like. Oh. Exactly, without you even knowing it. Yeah. So um, the other time, I think some live streamers from Singapore, including Pon Sak, Shane Powell, they mm. were overseas as well. And then uh, this news made headline as well. Um, their car, somebody broke the glass reached in, took away all their passports, their wallets and everything. So it was mentioned that why they left their valuables in the car because they were just going to go out for lunch to just grab lunch quickly mm. and come back. Mm. So they thought they just leave everything in the car. So there's you no know, less baggage. Mm. But by the time they came back, it was too late. Even oh their my. passports oh were my. gone. In Singapore, the problem is different. You leave your car for a while, you buy food, you come back, you get fined. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I rather that. I, I rather, rather that, that for sure. Yeah. So you know, thinking about moving away, there's so many considerations, right? But according to some research, this may be surprising. Moving away out of Singapore may help you foster a stronger national identity. Like for example, when you watch me watch, yes, and then you feel very strongly about that. Cool. Yes. Or like when you know my friend Jermaine moves away and. When it comes to National Day or Chinese New Year, she would dress up, she would celebrate. <laughs> but in Singapore, she won't do such things. In Singapore, she'd be like, oh, I don't want to go out. You know, yeah, kind of thing. Right. Yeah, so it kind of is like a reverse psychology thing because you miss everyone back home. A bit. It's like Hazel moving out and then she feels closer to her family. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The yes, same. It's the same. The, the, it's the same. Yeah. So I remember when I was in Hong Kong, mm. I miss Singapore so much that I went into bread talk. La. <laughs> Get a bread in Hong Kong. <laughs> I can't remember it clearly. The taste wasn't quite the same, and mm. I remember the disappointment I felt. Like, oh, it's not the taste of Singapore that I was imagining. Mm. That's right. the thing I would miss most if I moved out of Singapore. The food, the talk? food. Oh. not bread. I mean, sure, I'll, I'll miss <laughs> bread talk, but I'll miss the food because Singaporean food, or I guess our Southeast Asian food, is yeah. so hard to be replicated anywhere else. And I've tried, like mm. living in the US, I've tried like your Hainanese chicken rice, your paratha. They call it paratha there. It's all like. Mm, it's not it quite the not same, same, yeah. same and you can bring as many prima packets as you can <laughs> yeah. it's still not the same yes yeah. and you know like in the UK or whatever it is I think they change countries like every year every two years they have this thing called Singapore Day right yeah. and, oh, oh yes. my god Singapore Day is the most fun thing in the world because yeah. suddenly it's like in Singapore like I hate people I'm like oh my god but suddenly right you feel so happy that like thousands of Singaporeans are all there and you know like when they have it in the UK last time right people would fly in from literally every part of Europe Singaporeans from every part of Europe Aww. will fly in for Singapore Day and then our dearest Sian Long will come yeah. in yeah <laughs> I mean if there's a chance to see Lee Sian Long I will fly in also it's true and does this happen on 9th of August Singapore Day no, no. I oh, think no? July or something Thing. Yeah, they like come another up. month, and oh, then yeah. they fly in your favorite hawkers as well. Oh! Yeah, your cashewina curry, your oh, no yes, your chi yong fan. Your... That's why I would fly in. Correct. I for cashewina curry, I fly in. The queue is like damn long. No problem. Goodness. Singaporeans are born to queue. Correct. I will queue for a bite of my curry chicken yes. and I will cry. It's but in our right. blood. It's in our it blood. It really makes you like, you want to cry. You know? <laughs> Everybody just yeah. gathers there. It feels so nice. And you know, even our Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Selong, he flies in. Um, he walks around. He's very friendly. You know, you can come out and talk to him. Aww. It's just very Aww. nice. I think mm. it's so nice that they do that for mm. the Singaporeans living overseas. But here's the thing, right? If we take it back to when Singapore was first like instituted, yeah. You know, we were a fishing village, right? Yes. Mm. And that means that we were a port. And that means a lot of people come in and go. And mm. there's so many people that have moved here and left. And that's what Singapore is all about. We welcome people from everywhere. I think there is this Filipino lady. Her name is Janet. She actually shared how she gave up her dreams of being a journalist to pursue a life as a domestic worker in Singapore. Oh. Yeah, she wanted to be a journalist, right? Um, but to support her family, she had to come here right. and work and, you know, send money home. She did suffer a lot. You know, it's not easy being in that kind of situation. Mm. But thankfully, she found a good employer oh. who treats her with respect and allowed her to even work on her own goals and her own dreams. Mm. And because of that, she was able to take courses um, to help in her growth and eventually move back to the Philippines and bought a condo in the Philippines. Wow. Good idea. Wow. Oh yeah. my gosh, so, that's incredible. I think people talk about the American dream and all that. And then people end up there and they realise it's not really a dream. Maybe mm. it's the Singapore dream. The Singapore dream. Yeah. I like the sound of that. Mm. Why do you think like people, you know, like Janet would want to move to Singapore? I feel like the primary reason is of course the salary. 
they could have been earning a lot here than they would have if they stayed in their home country. Mm. That's a huge factor for sure. Mm, mm. That's true. Actually, recently, um, I had my house painted and then the um, guy who was painting my house, um, he actually, I was talking to him and he told me that he has a degree in Bangladesh. Oh, Ooh, wow. Yeah, so he went to university, he has a degree, but he decided that, you know, working as a painter in Singapore actually pays him more. And he says that he likes it here so much. Um, you know, it just feels like... He says that he's doing more for his family here. Oh, Can you just mention, back when I was in secondary school, I was a McDonald's a worker, right? Yes. Um, on Sundays, a lot of these um, uh, construction site workers mm. would come to McDonald's and they would buy like a, a hot fudge sundae oh, yeah. each and then they would just hang out and like eat it together. Yeah. Like. Very cute, you know? Like It's sort of like they have found their own community and their mm. own home mm. outside of home. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and I can't be happier to see that. That's the Singaporean spirit. We we welcome no matter what. Of course, there's xenophobia here and there. Let's not talk about that. But mm. eventually, this is a home for anyone that wants to come here. Um, we've got some Singaporeans here that, you know, our producers went online to search about who actually moved away from Singapore. And here's what they had to say, okay? One of them said, I have no regrets. And he even urged other Singaporeans to try living abroad if you can afford it, mm. um, see new places, and you can return if you want after seeing the world. Yeah. After, you know, seeing more things, he realised that a lot of things we complain about here mm. are actually very trivial. This reminds me of one of my friends whom I met in LA, the, the, the trip that we had together. Mm. I bumped into him. Like, he told, he oh, saw my Instagram mm. story. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. he was like, Hazel, I'm just 10 minutes away from you. I'm like, are you serious? So, after I met him, I found out that he left his job at his government job lah, to basically go travel the world for one year. Yeah. At the point of time when I met him, he's been to 39 different places in the US. Wow. So now, he's still abroad. Oh. He's still like living his dream. I don't know where he gets all that money. But, he basically screamed and saved so he can make this work for him. Wow. So ultimately, he wants to come back because he still needs to work, you know? Yeah. But at least, you know, he managed to live it. Correct. And I feel like, you know, we have that luxury to know that we can go away, mm. we can go explore, see the world, but we have a place to call home that we can come back to that's very safe and very secure. Yeah. And just knowing that, I think that's not an option that everybody has. You know, mm. some people have to move because they're running away from something yeah. that you know, they're completely unsafe in their countries. I mean, let's not go into what's going on in the world right now. But, you know, people have those problems. But we know that we can go away for a while and there's this very nice, warm home waiting for us. Right. My mm. favourite part about coming back to Singapore is when I scan my passport in the automated lane. Oh right? my it gosh. Says, Hold on. I think it's a three-step for you. I think your favourite part about coming home, first of all, is the bread and butter <laughs> on the SQ plane. <laughs> Secondly, is when they say... Welcome, Welcome home. home. That's right. Yeah. And That's then right. your automated passport. Yes. <laughs> but doesn't that lane make you feel like so powerful? Yes. Right. And it's the words, welcome home. And then they, they put my name on it. And then I walk through that lane. I feel like queen, you know. <laughs> then go out and take a grab home. Oh, yeah. It's such a nice feeling to come home. Like mm. definitely. Um, this uh, other user actually shared that he moved away after graduating from university. He did a graduate program in Canada and he worked in Dubai. So it's been about three and a half years since he's moved away. But he's thinking of coming back to Singapore to stay for a while. He doesn't know exactly how long he will be here. Um, but he does feel like after staying away for so long, Singapore feels less like home and he doesn't really belong anywhere. Oh. Yeah, after you've lived in, I think, a lot of different places, mm. you kind of lose that sense of, hey, where do I belong? Mm, I guess you feel like a citizen of the world, you know, where you're mm. not this enough there and you're not that enough here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I still have a lot of respect for people that migrate or emigrate because it's mm. it's not easy at all mm. um, trying to settle there and also being alone in a different country. If you go there alone, like like your friend who travels around alone, like that's not easy, you know? Not having your family to fall back on, your friends to fall back on, like you are essentially by yourself. But that's right. So that's where he made a lot of new friends, mm. a whole new circle of friends, wherever he goes, because he's an extrovert, right? So he, he enjoys talking to people and making new friends. Mm. But, you know, this other user also shared um, his or her experience of living in the US. Mm. So um, they were there for about three and a half years, but she still felt like living there was extremely fast-paced. Oh. So that's another point of consideration, right? The pace of living. Right. I think in Singapore, the the pace of living is really super fast. Yes. But can you imagine if you were to migrate or immigrate to places like Hong Kong? Mm. Or mm. Japan? Japan? Japan, yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. right. US. She felt like well, that was too much for her and she got very homesick. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think it really depends on like 
your individual capacity mm. to handle all of these things as well. Because some people are at that stage in their life where they want to go there and they just want to be in a foreign country and just chill for whatever it is. But Correct. some people, you know, just want to their home bodies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it depends yeah. on what you want. Like Hazel said, you know, if she moves, it's gonna be, you know, to progress in a career. If I move, it's because I wanna do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna play? I wanna play. You wanna play. <laughs> but what do you girls appreciate most about living in Singapore? The many policies, I would say. The BTO policies for new couples. I mean, like granted, BTOs now may take a longer time, six to seven years, but it still offers us um, a chance to buy our own property at a lower rate. And there's so many grants, you know, mm-hmm. if you stay near your parents and whatnot, you get even more discounts, in a sense. Yeah. So I think this is really helpful. Mm. For me, I think it would be the healthcare and education system. Mm. Mm. If I think about emigrating, right, if I really think about moving permanently to the US and relocating there, if I ever have kids, like, look at what's happening in the schools there. Yeah. I would never raise kids there. Singapore is honestly one of the best places in this world to raise kids. Yeah. Mm. And the education system is... It's great. I mean, it's not bad. Like, I don't know what's 8 times 8, but you know, 64. Really <laughs> <laughs> and you, you know, I feel like every time we travel, everywhere we go, right, um, they ask you, where are you from? And you go to Singapore and they go, oh, beautiful country. And that's so the clean. The first thing they always yeah. say. And I think it makes you feel very proud, you know. Mm-hmm. For me, it's really about being close to the people I love and just it feels very warm it feels like home and the safety of it you know I don't have to think about anything I honestly don't have to think about it you know I can be out at like in the middle of the night it's not a concern you know suddenly when you're overseas you realise that there's so many things that you took for granted that you know you have to think about like oh can I go to this like shady area at this time people think about that kind of things and we never have to right Mm -hmm. I have a I had a French boss last time Mm. she grew up in this place called Toulouse in France Mm. And when she was younger, like she would hear stories about us girls, like in Singapore, oh, we would go clubbing, we go out at night, all girls, like, you know, it doesn't matter, we don't care. For her, when she was younger, they cannot go out in a group of girls alone. It's just simply unheard of. Something's gonna happen to you. So look at us. You get a chance to go out. So we should go out. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, final thoughts. Is the grass really greener on the other side? The grass is greener where you water it. Wow, words of wisdom. I really like that. I'm so proud of you, Azura. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's maturity. Yes. Well, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I feel like, you know, going abroad is fun and all that. But like what Zura mentioned just now, maybe just take a couple of years to go and experience it for yourself. Mm. See if you really like it. Like a lot of my friends, they've heard so much about New York. They've heard so much about, say, like Times Square. But a good friend of mine, she actually went there and she came back telling me, oh my gosh, there is always a stench. It, it smells like pee. Exactly. In the summertime, right? Because the heat mm. heats up the pee, right? <laughs> Whoa, very oh smelly. Gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like a lot of things isn't what we think it is until yes. we actually experience it ourselves. So go experience for yourself and then decide where you want to be. Yeah. All I can say if you decide to really move away from Singapore, learn how to cook. Oh yes. <laughs> Learn how to cook Singaporean food, okay? Yeah. I think that's something that you really need. But. Correct. To end this off, I'd like to share a story. Okay. I don't know if I've shared this before, <laughs> okay? But this was my time overseas, right? Where I was walking from campus A to campus B, and then out of nowhere, it starts pouring. Oh. Like, it was already maybe like 8 degrees or something, and it starts pouring. It went from 0 to 100. No drizzle, no nothing. Okay. It started pouring, and I started crying in the rain, like, mate. <gasps> It was like a music video. I was walking. I still had another 15 minutes to go. Oh and I was crying in the rain because I knew that if I was in Singapore, I could call anybody and they would come and pick me up. But I had no one to call there. Oh no. So that's my conclusion. That's so sad. <laughs> so if you move overseas, bring an umbrella <laughs> and learn how to cook. Okay, this is a very fun and an interesting episode to explore. We hope you have learned something or if you have other thoughts to share, please feel free to Instagram DM us at itsclarity.co. That's right. We're also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Me Listen. Make sure you follow us there to stay updated on the latest episodes. That's right. Don't forget to share a video, comment, nice things, be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and turn on the notification bell. Once again, I'm Hazel. I'm Azura. And I'm Jermaine. And we'll see you on the next episode of Clarity's. Bye bye! SingaporeAir.com. Oh, we! Chris Flyer. Chris Flyer. It may be possible in the next few years for maybe. I'm so sorry. <laughs>
for now, I'm see how it's okay, I yes, try to hold it. I try to hold it. Okay. <laughs> Don't hold it. Yeah. Okay. Both of you would want to immigrate to the USA. For me, yes. Is there You're... something else I can help with? No? Can you help us book flights to USA? <laughs> <laughs>